boy, oh boy. Raising Dion Season 2 is out right now, so yes. what does that mean? We're getting some of the cast back on the show, and this time it's going to be the one and only Miss Sammy Haney. Oh my goodness, I am so excited for y'all to hear this interview. Yes. And and and, and she drops a little exclusive. If little you bit. haven't finished binge watching it yet, she drops a little knowledge to have you pay attention because there's something that you don't want to miss. Yeah. Just saying. I'm really enjoying season two. I must say, I feel like all of the actors are coming more into their characters, especially Sammy. She's getting more on-screen time and becoming more comfortable with her character. Oh, yeah. And there may be a little original song there. Absolutely. And their triangle of justice that they, love they have. I love that. <laughs> And can we just say shout out to Carol because the writing is still so brilliant because you don't know with Pat. No. You just don't no know. <laughs> She's so good at going, is he good? Is he bad? Is he good? Is he bad? Exactly, man. <laughs> exactly. But her interview is later on the show. Now, let's get a little crazy. But before that, here's a freaking ad from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Self Pause, a self affirmation yes. meditation app that helps you start your day, stay motivated, and love yourself. Because you guys know we have been talking about this subject a lot with our guests on the podcast about staying mentally prepared for the entertainment industry and how to do that when preparing yourself for life. So, this app, Self Pause, is definitely a way to keep your mental health on track absolutely and here's the really great thing about it it's available in the app store so you can get it no matter what you got what kind of phone you got or whatever and there's they offer two different tiers there's a free tier and a premium tier now if you're worried about the premium tier guess what you can try it out free for two weeks, 14 days, and then it's only $3.99 after that a month. I mean, to keep your mental stability and to keep positive and keep re- that's worth it. Exactly. Totally worth it. Exactly. You guys need to check this app out. Do it. We do it. We love it. I think you will too. I really think so as well. Selfpause.com and like he said, uh, Google Play and the App Store on iOS, iPhone systems. Yes. But now it is time to get this crazy show started. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Holy moly, we're on episode 184 this week. Woo! Getting a little crazy, yes. as you know we do. Man, oh man, you guys know your host with the most, myself, J-Lo Fantastic, and the one only mouth. What's up? Guys, we got a packed show for you this week, and I mean, we are talking about the Oscars. Of we're course. We're super excited about them, especially, I even made a Google document of <laughs> ones I've already watched, and ones that I want to watch, and then, of course, ones that... That I need to watch with the girlfriend. So it's just like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. you got to do what you're supposed to do. But I'm super excited because we got a lot of great news for you guys this week. Oh, heck yeah. Along with all the Oscar nominations, we're talking about the, the what the little promo trailer that Warner Brothers dropped for the DC movies coming up and like, oh, so boy, good. So I was good. in Geek Dome heaven when I saw it. It was fantastic. We've got some huge news about Ryan Reynolds and Netflix and his next movie coming out and just uh, some renewals. Do you like the Smurfs? Got good news about the Smurfs. Uh, just all kinds of stuff, man. Definitely. It's going to be a great show. And I mean, guys, it's freaking amazing. <laughs> and before we get this thing started, be sure to head over to our website, www.crazyantmedia.com, where you can start rocking the latest and greatest Crazy Ant Media gear. We got shirts, we got hats, we got all the good things. I just got myself a mask today because you Fact. know we're in pandemic time, so you got to get yourself <laughs> a crazy mask. We're super excited about everything. Valentine's Day on Monday, we have a 20% off promo code. So be sure to head over to our website. You can go to ItCaf Podcast on Instagram or Twitter and find our link tree where it has all yes. the links to anything and everything that you need. But be sure to click on that merchandise one because like I said, we got some great stuff happening right now while supplies last. But we are going to jump right in, mm. man. And I mean, of course, the biggest talk of the week is the Oscars. And I mean... Man, oh man, the Oscar nominations, huge this week. Netflix did really well. Power of the Dog uh, got freaking nominated for like 12 things, 12 yeah. different categories, and that's the most of any other film. It was followed closely by Dune, which is by no surprise, um, and which defied doubters to earn 10 nominations. A yep. lot of people were hating on that one. It's true. And West Side Story, Belfast, uh, each received like seven nominations. Uh, there were several historical making moments with these uh, this year's nominations. Uh, Jane Campion, 
became the first woman to earn two Best Director nods with yeah. her uh, nomination for The Power of the Dog, and she also was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay category uh, with Belfast. Now, Bar- ooh, Branaga <laughs> became the first person to earn seven Oscar nominations in seven different categories. Yeah, he's killing it. He's super, <laughs> super killing it. Uh, Coda star Troy Colster, Coaster um, became the only second deaf actor to be nominated playing a deaf character yep. following in the footsteps of his co-star Marley Matlin, uh, who won the Oscar for her leading role in Children of the Lesser God and the Boon of the Domestic uh, Tranquility, being, uh, being the Ricardos, Javier Bardeen, and parallel mothers, Penelope Cruz, became the sixth married couple to be nominated in acting uh, for acting in the same year. Yeah. So that is also really exciting. A lot of things are shaking up the industry that we're super pumped about. And if you count, they're not married, but boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, you know, yeah. for, for Power of the Dog, Kirsten Dunst and Jesse Plumes, they got nominated together right as well. So that's pretty awesome. But okay, are you ready? Because we're going to go through it. We're going to give you everything, every nomination, everything, and that way you'll be prepared. Get your ballots ready. We're getting ours ready because we're sure. going for the Golden Funko. You know what we do. Let's start off with Best Picture, okay? So we've got 10 of them, and none of them were Spider-Man No Way Home. It's true. It's just, true. I'm just saying. <laughs> not too happy about that. But here we go. Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, and Nightmare Alley. And as I said, I think I agree with Jimmy Kimmel and Kevin Smith that don't look up as fun as it is and awesome as it is. I would have rather seen Spider Man No Way Home on there. Agreed, man, and agreed. And, and I mean, you forgot Power of the Dog and, and West Power Side of the Story. Dog and West Side Story. I was just commenting. I was just making my you comment. Know. Power of the Dog and West Side Story. I mean, it's super crazy, man. Super crazy. A lot of good stuff. Actor in a leading role, we got Javier Bardeen, uh, with being the Ricardos, Benedict Cumberbatch, not Channing Tatum, and Power of the Dog, <laughs> Andrew Garfield, and Tick Tick Boom. That one's really exciting. Yes. Will Smith and King Richard, Denzel Washington, and the Tragedy of Macbeth. That's a tough category. That is a huge category. Actor in a supporting role. This one's going to be a little tough, too. We've got Shiarn Hines in Belfast, Troy Coetzer in Coda, Jesse Plemons in The Power of the Dog, my man J.K. Simmons in Being the Ricardos, Cody Smith-McPhee in The Power of the Dog. That's another tough one, but I'm pulling for J.K. It really is, man. I love J.K. And actress in a leading role. we got Jessica Chastain in The Eyes of Tammy so Faye. So good. Uh, Olivia Coleman, who's basically nominated every year in The Lost Daughter, Penelope Cruz in Parallel Mothers, Nicole Cole Kidman and being the Ricardos mm. and Kristen Stewart and Spencer, which a lot of people are talking about. Yeah, so I, this is one be. that I really want to watch. Me too. She might be the sleeper. I, I don't know. Uh, actress in a supporting role. We've got Jesse Buckley in The Lost Daughter. We've got Ariana DeBose in West Side Story. Madam Judy Dench in Belfast. Kirsten Dunst in The Power of the Dog. And Awani Ellis or I, Anjawani Ellis. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. This is why they'll never have me read the nominations. Facts. In King Richard. <laughs> Me too. So I really, I would be thrilled if she won. Yeah. So damn good. Sarah Rich, really good, man. She basically sold the show oh. every time that she was on camera. Like it's for real. Uh, actor, or animated feature film. We got Encanto, Flea, Luca, The Mitchells versus The Machines, and Raya and the Lost Dragons. Encanto. Encanto. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. But that's three Disney movies. So. That's true. I mean, either way, they're winning an Oscar. Exactly. So. Uh, best Cinematography. We've got Greg Frazier for Dune. Dan Lawston for Nightmare Alley. We've got Ari Wegner for The Power of the Dog. Bruno De La Benali, <laughs> De Benali da, for Tragedy of Macbeth. And saying his name was a tragedy, I'm sorry. West Side Story, we've got Janice Kaminsky. Yeah, I'm, at least I'm not the only one. No. At least I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, for costume design, we got Cruella with Jenny Beaven. Uh, we got Crino with uh, a lot of people. Uh, Dune with Jacqueline West and Robert Morgan. Nightmare Alley with uh, Louise Sagrera and West Side Story with Paul Taswell. Mm, now this one's going to be an interesting one as well. Best Director, we've got Kenneth Branagh with Belfast. We've got Ryusuke Hamaguchi with Drive My Car. We've got Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza. Jane Campion, obviously, for The Power of the Dog. We've got Steven Spielberg himself, the legend, for West Side Story. I have some thoughts on that, but you know, I'm you know, just go. you know, uh, documentary <laughs> feature. We got uh, Ascension, uh, Ascension, 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 yeah. uh, Attica. 
We got Flea, Summer of School, and we got Riding the Fire, Lead Me Home, and The Queen of Basketball. Also, we have three songs of Ben Benzer, Ben Benazer, Yep. And uh, When We Were Bullies. Hmm. We so, were never bullies. We were never no, bullies. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, film editing. We've got Don't Look Up, Hank Corwin, Doom, Joe Walker, King Richard, Pamela Martin, The Power of the Dog, Peter Scayeris, Tick, Tick, Boom, Myron Kirsten, and Andrew Weisbloom. Yeah, Ooh, that's going to be a good one too. It really is. A lot of these stuff I feel like is neck and neck. To oh, yeah. be honest oh, with yeah. you. Uh, international feature film. We got Drive My Car, Japan. Flea from Denmark. The Hand of God from Italy. And uh, Lunana. Lua. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> Lunana. Today. Lunana, the yak in the classroom from <laughs> Bhutan, and the worst person in the world from Norway. Wow, we hold that title for pronouncing names. Facts. Uh, <laughs> makeup and hairstyling. This is going to be a really interesting one too, guys. you got Coming to America. We've got Cruella, Dune, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and House of Gucci. Ah. If y'all watch The Eyes of Tammy Faye and that remarkable transformation, I'm down for that. But right. I mean, I think all of these are going to be great, but her, Jessica Chastain's... Uh, Transformation was insane. Yeah, it's going to be a tough category as well. Music for original score, we got Don't Look Up, Nicholas Brittell, Dune, Hans Zimmer, mm. and Canto, uh, Jermaine Franco. Uh, we got Parallel Mothers for Alberto Iglesias and The Power of the Dog, uh, Johnny Greenwood. Mm. So. Woo. Music, and this one's always a fun one. Original score, I wonder who they're going to get to perform. Right. Uh, be Alive from King Richard, Dos Oraguntos from Encanto, down to Joy from Belfast, No Time to Die from No Time to Die, and Somehow You Do from Four Good Days. A lot of good stuff there. A lot of good stuff. Production design, we got Dune, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and West Side Story. Mm. Yeah. Now we've got short film, Animated, Affairs of the Heart, Bastilla, Box Ballet, Robin Robin, and The Windshield Wiper. Mm. Now for a short film live action, we got Ala Akchu, Take and Run, mm. The Dress, The Long Goodbye, On My Mind, and Please Hold. Ooh. All right. Right? Sound. Because you can't have film without sound, right? There's no more. It's not it's silent anymore. Belfast, Dune, No Time to Die, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. I'm going for Dune on that one. I'm just saying yeah. a lot of stuff. Now, this next one, visual effects is going to be a tight one as well. A lot of these, man. There's just so many good films that came out this year. A visual effects, we got Dune, Free Guy, No Time to Die, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and Spider-Man No Way Home. I would love for it to be Free Guy, but I think it's going to be Dune. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd like to see it be one of the Marvel movies just because they didn't give them nominations for anything else. Yeah. Okay, writing, adapted screenplay. Coda, screenplay by Slyon Heder. Drive My Car, screenplay by Ryushiki Hamaguchi and Takamasa Oe. Dune, screenplay by John Spalahis and Dennis Villeneuve and Eric Roth. The Lost Daughter, written by Maggie Gyllenhaal. Yes, that Maggie Gyllenhaal. And The Power of the Dog, written by, of course, Jane Campion. Nice. And writing an original screenplay, we got Belfast, written by Kenneth Branagh. Uh, Don't Look Up, it's a screenplay by Adam McKay and a um, story by Adam McKay and David uh, Sirota. Now, King Richard is by Zach Balin. Uh, Licorice Pizza, written by Paul Thomas Anderson. The Worst Person in the World, written by Eskil Vought and uh, Joachim Terror. Uh, so there you go. Those are all of this year's nominees for the 94th Oscars that will be held Sunday, March 27th. At, yep. Um, uh, obviously, 2022 <laughs> at Adobe Theater in Hollywood. And it will be televised live on ABC. And in more than 200 territories worldwide for the first time in three Oscar years. So that's crazy. Uh, the Oscars will have a host in 2022. And we've actually learned from multiple hosts will likely take the stage. However, no official names have been revealed yeah, yet. Yeah, from the last I saw, it's going to be like for the three-hour event, there'll be a different host for each hour. That's cool. So yeah, it's, uh, who knows? I mean, it's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. And of course, you heard West Side Story a lot, right? Yeah. 
right? And as you know, like we said, we've got we want to watch all the Oscar nominees, blah blah blah. Where can you watch them? Well, we can tell you where you can watch at least one. Steven Spielberg's Oscar nominated West Side Story will make its streaming debut on Disney Plus March second. Nice. So that's pretty awesome. It's get this though, because of those weird interwoven deals kind of a thing. It'll also be available on HBO Max that same day. So if you don't have either one, you know, of those, you know, maybe you have this, maybe you have that, you can watch it on two different places. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we have both. We have double the pleasure. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll watch it on one, he'll watch it on another one, and then there, you know. Yeah, see if there's any different quality. I mean, we could <laughs> compare and contrast, compare and contrast. Uh, Disney... This is exciting. Guys. Yes, this Disney is. is set to reclaim the rights of Netflix's comic book series, and we're talking about Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and The Punisher. And you remember when they all teamed up and became the Defenders? And now, and now, it's supposed to be at the end of February. Yep. But the studio has not yet announced plans for where Daredevil and company will go. Streaming platforms such as Disney Plus and Hulu are possibilities. The series are leaving Netflix for good at the end of the month, like we said. But I for sure think it's going to end up on Hulu. No think, way it ends up on Disney+. No, Plus. no. And I think Hulu is the right move because they're dark and and fans are going to want to see them. So if you if you don't have Hulu, you better jump on them quick on, on, on Netflix because they're leaving for good, like I said. For sure. And how awesome is this? It's awesome and disappointing because I think everybody thought, obviously, Star Wars Day would be the time. But it's not going to be Star Wars Day. But it is, and we have it. Obi-Wan Kenobi has finally received a premiere date at Disney+. Plus. Yeah, it's not May the 4th, but the Ewan, Ewan, me, 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 I need more coffee too. The Ewan McGregor-led live-action Star Wars series will debut May 25th. Now, the reason they chose that instead of Star Wars Day is because it's the 40th anniversary of the original New Hope. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Um, So, as you guys know, this is set 10 years after the dramatic events of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, where the Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi faced his greatest defeat, the downfall and corruption of his best friend and Jedi apprentice, Anakin Skywalker. Now, obviously, he turned to the dark side as Darth Vader. McGregor reprises his role as Obi-Wan, and Hayden Christensen is also coming back as the big bad himself, Darth Vader. So that's going to be exciting. A lot of good Star Wars stuff, man. Oh, I mean, I, I'm sure everybody watched the ending stuff of uh, Book of Boba Fett. Mm. A lot of stuff moving forward with Mando Season 3. And also, everybody's been talking about Ahsoka Tano series yes. as well. Uh, Ray Ray Stevenson has been cast in the upcoming Star Wars series. He joins previously announced cast uh, series lead Rosario Dawson, who will lead as Osaka, Osaka Tano, obviously, and as well as cast members Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, Natasha Lou Bortiz, and uh, Ivana Sarkou. Details of who uh, Stevenson will be playing in the series are being kept under wraps. I bet it's going to be a bad guy, though. He's got yeah. that bad guy feel. <laughs> um, but it is believable believe that he will be playing a villain in the series yes uh, <laughs> though it will not be the main villain grand admiral thrawn i i could see him being thrawn sure. uh this is not the first time stevenson has been a part of the star wars universe though he previously lent his voice to two animated series of star wars the clone wars and star wars rebels as character gar saxon a, a mandalorian commando yeah so that's very interesting i mean yeah i like how they keep it in the family though and they For try sure. you know that's awesome how they do it hey have you heard the crossover right we've talked about it in the past well the crossover disney plus's basketball drama series has apparently found its narrator and i'm in love with this david diggs is going to narrate the series which of course as we told you is based on kwame alexander's novel nba star lebron james maverick carter and jamal henderson of the spring hill company are the executive producers on this bad boy now the series introduces teen brothers josh and jay bay bell who are considered to be basketball phenomenon if you guys don't know and it tells their story of their coming of age on and off uh, the court as their former professional basketball player father adjusts to the life after basketball and their mother finally gets to pursue the dreams of her own. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting. I think so, too. I just uh, listened to a Dak Prescott interview with uh, Dwayne Wade, and they were talking about the progression of who you become after basketball because he's basically – 
Dwayne Wade was working towards basketball since he was nine years yeah. old. So that's all he knew and loved. So it's all about coming to grips with who you are after basketball. And Absolutely. I think that's very, very cool to get that perspective Which from each so person. many of them have a problem, yeah. you know, because it is all they've known and they were thrown into it and most of them were poor and then they become rich and there's just this whole, it's difficult. So yeah, I think series like these are so relevant. Agreed, man. Agreed. And Disney Plus has also ordered two unscripted series from Actors in the Marvel Universe. Uh, Brie Larson is behind Growing Up, a docuseries that looks at 10 different coming-to-age tales. During each uh, 30-minute episode, the series uh, will use narrate, narrative, experimental, and documentary filmmaking to feature one person uh, or hero ages 18 mm. to 22 and their experiences of growing up. Cool. Now, Renovations from Jeremy Renner is a four-part series that follows Renner as he travels the world to help communities by reimagining unique purpose-built vehicles. Behind the big screen, uh, Jeremy is a construction aficionado, and he is heavily invested in the highly creative uh, fabriculture and culture uh, that exists around the globe and hopes to change lives with these skills and inspire others to do the same. What does this guy not do? Seriously. So like he, but he, he's a singer, he's in a band, he's construction, he's an actor. Like yeah, this guy's volunteer on firefighter. It, he's I, got like his own fucking like, yeah. I mean, seriously, like what? It's crazy. Now, in case you guys were worried after the whole E cancellation and like what was going to happen, when was it going to, oh my gosh, fear not. The Kardashians are okay. We're good. They're back. You can waste hours of your life watching them all again. Yeah. It's brand new. Brand new. Facts. Why? Because after a short hiatus, the Kardashians are coming back to TV. Oh. Hulu has unveiled a first look teaser for the Kardashians, the new reality show starring the internationally famous family, premiering on the platform on my birthday, April 14th. For you. Oh, yeah, just for me. Yeah. Although details about what events the new series will cover are still unclear, The Kardashians is set to follow the same formula as Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and why wouldn't it if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Exactly. The show promises to give insight into the Kardashian women's work as influencers and businesswomen, along with the pressures that come with motherhood and raising children in the spotlight. Kris Jenner, Kourtney Kardashian, Kim Kardashian West... Is it still less? Chloe Kardashian, Kendall Jenner, and Kylie Jenner will all return from the original reality series to star in this new one. The only thing I wish, I wish they would have come up with a new name because, like, two of the most influential people, a part of this family, are not Kardashians. No, they're but, Jenners. You yeah. know. You know, it is what it is, but it's basically going to be keeping up with Kardashians. Yeah. Come on now. Should it, the KJ girls. Exactly. I mean, I mean come on. That, 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 exactly. Would have worked. <laughs> Would have worked. Uh, Warner Media. we're getting to jump over to the bunny. That's right. Village Roadhouse, our road show, is suing Warner Brothers on Monday, alleging that the studio sabotaged the theatrical release of The Matrix Resurrections in order to drive subscribers mm. to HBO Max. But they were doing this with all the films, so so and, and a couple other people have filed lawsuits as well. So. Yeah, the suit uh, stems from Warner Brothers' controversial move to release the entire 2021 theatrical release slate simultaneously on the streaming service. The studio ended up paying out millions of dollars to profit participants of uh, to make up for lost box office revenue. Uh, the suit alleges that Warner Brothers did not consult or mm. notify the Village Roadshow studio, but our uh, before uh, opting to put the Matrix Resurrec Resurrections for the fourth installment of the franchise on HBO Max, the film has grossed just $148 million mm. at the box office to date, a fraction of gross uh, ripped, or reaped by the three earlier films. So yeah. that's definitely taken an impact. But also... Did we need another Matrix movie? Well, agreed. They, agreed. I think the only reason that they might have a claim in here and might actually win is because if they can prove they were not notified about yeah. the decision, that's heavily going to play in their favor. But, you know, we never know. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Like you said, they're not the first ones to do it. Exactly. Oh, boy. Ah, I kind of talked about this at the beginning of the show. Yes, and sir. I, as a comic geek, 
Oh my god! Went I crazy. can't even like tell you how my mind was blown. Did, Did you not see sleep. it? Did not I am sleep. talking about the new footage of DC's Aquaman and Lost Kingdom, Black Adam, and The Flash. It was all revealed in get this, just a like a one minute kind of teaser video yeah. uh, on social media. The video teased a brief look at Jason Momoa standing above a valley and sitting on Aquaman's throne, which, although bit minimal, it does serve as the first official footage from the long-awaited sequel. Then we got to see a ton of new footage from Black Adam featuring Dwayne Johnson in action as the title character. The footage also marked the first look at the Justice Society of America with Dr. Fate, Hawkman, Adam Smasher, and Cyclone. And holy shit! (laughs) Boom! Dr. Fate looks so fucking badass. And Hawkman, when the wings come out... If you haven't seen it, you've got to find it. If you're a comic geek, you are going to fucking die. It's awesome. Uh, Additionally, though, that's not it. We also saw the Flash's new suit in a quick thing. And we finally, we finally heard Michael Keaton's Batman. He's back in the voiceover of that little clip. And it was freaking awesome. I mean, you're going to blow your mind when you hear it. Now... With four major titles on deck in 2022, obviously it's going to be a huge year for Warner Brothers and DC Comics. Uh, Releasing on March 4th is what we didn't talk about in all that little trailer, The Batman. Yes. Holy shit. I'm so excited. Obviously, Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz. And that movie is already tracking, and they said is likely going to be the highest grossing Batman film of all time, even above the Nolan films, which is going to be huge. Yeah, for real. I mean, could this literally be the staple point of the rest of the Batman, like, I, uh, could he jump to the top of the totem pole? I think he, I think oh. he can. I'm everything I've seen so far from this movie has me excited as hell, and it could possibly be dethroning Keaton for me as my favorite Batman. I don't know. You guys remember a year ago, you were like, Batman, please don't fucking sparkle, <laughs> don't sparkle. No, I mean, and he was like, look, you got to remember, right? When you saw George Clooney and Joel Schumacher, yeah. and you were thinking from dusk till dawn that was going to be perfect, and then he fucking put nipples on him and neon, and we fucked it all up. So you can't blame me for thinking, oh shit, Pattinson, sparkly vampire, but no, no, go no, Matt, Matt Reeves, Reeves. <laughs> like go Matt, right, Reeves. Matt Reeves, you're That's killing it, bro. So great. But this next one's very interesting because I'm excited to see this man's career just grow after. Oh, what? Yeah. Um, Samulu and America Ferreira have signed on to play opposite Margot Robbie in Barbie, <laughs> the upcoming movie from Warner Brothers. Uh, Mattel and Robbie's Lucky Chap Entertainment. Facts. Uh, uh, Greta Gerwig is directing the movie from the script that she co-wrote with Noah Bobach and uh, with Robbie playing the title Toy Doll and Ryan Gosling playing Ken. We've announced that on the show. It was a no unknown who Lou and Ferreira will be playing as details of the film's plot are being kept under fantastically wrapped because they're just Barbie (laughs) girls in a Barbie world. But, you know, I think with just like this epic cast coming together, I'm going to have to watch it. I mean, it's it's You know, it's going to be a fun movie. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a fun. It's. I'm sorry, but I'll watch anything that Margot Robbie is in. Facts. Facts. Just, uh, she could just be sitting there in a brown sack reading whatever. I would watch it. I'm just going to tell you. HBO has also picked up Doomsday Machine. I'm excited about this one. The upcoming series starring Claire Foy, who, still my queen, still my queen, <laughs> as Facebook's chief operating Facts. officer, Sheryl Sandberg. Doomsday Machine chronicles the political and social minefields that Facebook has navigated on its relentless quest to growth, which... <laughs> Dove the other day. The series examines how Sandberg and Mark Zuckerberg's work is shaping the way that billions of people around the world communicate and consume information. As we told you, we announced that Foy was originally attached to this thing in October of last year, but it's finally moving forward and super excited for that one. Oh yeah, man. I mean, she deserves all the best. Oh yeah. She really does. Jumping over to the I, Viacom CBS, Nickelodeon Animation, and Paramount Animation have formed a creative partnership with Live Belgium and M I M P S uh, to the, do their first project, but it's going to be the Smurfs, and yes. it's going to be multiple Smurf movies, as they say. The first project under the new partnership banner is an animated musical film oh. produced by all four labels, set to begin production yes. this year, and is set to release in December twentieth of twenty twenty four. Nice. Now, Nickelodeon also announced a twenty six episode second season yes. of the CG animated TV series, The Smurfs. And as well, Sony 
who previously had the rights to the iconic brand, released three theatrical films that racked up more than $1.1 billion worldwide. But, you know, I mean, sometimes you just got to change course sometimes. Yeah. Kind of like the Spider-Man universe and Sony. Yeah, uh, I mean. Give that shit back. Right, give it back. They gave away the Smurfs, but they won't give away <laughs> Spider-Man. But Nickelodeon is happy to have the Smurfs. Oh, yeah, for I'm sure. happy that they're coming back. I fucking love the Smurfs. Exactly. Um, This one's an interesting one. I would not have thought at the top of the list of shows to be rebooted, but here we go anyway. CBS is apparently rebooting the Kyle Chandler starring late 90s fantasy newspaper drama Early Edition. You remember that one? I do. Um... It's been handed a project pilot order. The reboot with a female lead this time, though, follows an ambitious but uncompromising journalist um, who starts receiving tomorrow's newspaper today and finds herself in a complicated business of changing the news instead of reporting it. Oh. So, yeah, you kind of know what's going to happen and you got to kind of like, you know, kind of do the thing. It was an okay show back yeah. in the day. I'm a, I'm a Kyle Chandler fan, so, but I, I just not where I would have thought a reboot was coming. Yeah, just, seriously, that's very interesting. Very interesting premise, too. We'll see how well that one does. Yeah. Uh, CBS has uh, added a East New York to its pilot book. It's a cop drama from Law and & Order and dun, dun. NYP PD, uh, Blue executive producer Will Finkenstein. Um, the series follows Regina Haywood, a newly promoted police captain in East New York, and improvised uh, <laughs> A great working class neighborhood <laughs> and Easter e- eastern edge of Brooklyn as she leads a diverse group of officers and detectives from uh, some whom are reluctant to uh, deploy her creative methods and serving underneath her uh, during the midst of a social uphill of the early seeds of uh, gentrification. Mm. So a lot of a lot of different things, you know. Social yeah. media is out there, and a lot of people are saying, you know, fuck the police. So I don't know, man. That's a that's very interesting. It but, is. It. I like all these cop shows making a big comeback. Yeah, though. I'm kind of a fan of that. Uh, okay, jumping over to NBC Universal, we've got some big news. Of course, this is going to be Christopher Nolan, right? We keep talking about Christopher Nolan, but you, as you guys know, he's got a big one coming because he left the whole Warner Brothers thing. Uh Dane DeHaan apparently is the latest to sign on to and star alongside Cillian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, Rami Malek, Ben Sadafi, and Josh Hartnett in Christopher Nolan's film Oppenheimer for Universal Pictures. Details as far as the character DeHaan is playing have not been disclosed so we'll have to find out, but that cast just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm excited for that. I am too, man. Christopher Nolan really knows how to, you know, wrap around a core ensemble cast and mm-hmm. just do amazing things with that cast. So. And dark storylines. For sure. So. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, it's going to be fun. But Universal Pictures <laughs> has released a new trailer for their new Jurassic World, the third film of the Jurassic World series and the sixth installment of the Jurassic Park franchise, which will premiere in theaters mm-hmm. June 10th. Now, Jurassic World Dominion uh, is set in the present day around four years after Jurassic okay. uh, World Kingdom has fallen, following the destruction of the Jurassic World theme park. Uh, genetically engineered dinosaurs were auctioned off by companies and released in the human world. Cast members of the original Jurassic Park series will also return in the film, including Laura Deem as Dr. Ellie Salter, uh, Sam Neill as Alan Grant, and Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm. Yes. And uh, in the trailer, there were there are dinosaurs wandering free in a wintry <laughs> tundra and swimming in the ocean as humans look wearily. The prologue for Jurassic World, uh, which debuted in November of 2021, gave a brief glimpse yep. into this new alarming landscape. Now, in a massive T-Rex wrecks the havoc on the one-time drive-in movie theater, <laughs> uh, Jurassic World Dominion stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, DeWanda Wise, Omar Sy, Delena Pinda. So a lot of people coming back. Yeah. And, I mean, from the original cast, I think that's going to be amazing. But, yeah, I'm very interested at the end of the last one, you know. They're just all running free. So yeah. I what's mean, that going to look like? It's going to look terrifying. But I'm, I'm with you. I like how they're going to bring back the original cast members and merge them with the new cast members of the new series. And I think that's going to be really exciting. This one, we talked about it way back when they first announced it. And I was unsure. Yeah, do we need this? Do we not need this? But the trailer looked pretty fucking good. So I'm a little bit more on board with it. I'm talking about uh, the remake of Stephen King's Firestarter with Zac Efron. It debuted the official trailer and announced a day and date premiere on Peacock. 
Black and in theaters on May 13th. Now, as you guys know, the film's based on King's 1980 novel and the 1984 original movie with Drew Barrymore that follows Charlie, a young girl who develops pyrokinetic superpowers and is captured by the government agency who wishes to use her gift as a weapon. Sidney Lemon will play Charlie's mother while Efron plays her father. The trailer actually looked pretty good. I was a fan of the original Drew Barrymore, so that's why I was kind of like, but this looks pretty good. It does, man. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Uh, Sony, Oscar winner Russell Crowe has joined the cast of Craven the Hunter in an unspecified role. Of course. And as we told you previously, Aaron Taylor Johnson is starring as the title character of the role of Spider-Man's most uh, deadly antagonist. Uh, Crowe is no stranger to the world of superheroes. He played uh, Jor-El's father uh, to Superman, everybody knows, and Zack Snyder's uh, Man of Steel. So, he is also due to enter the Marvel Cinematic Universe and yeah. Taika Waititi's Thor God Love and Thunder. Uh, if you are confused by that, Craven the Hunter is not a part of the official MCU, although he appears in the Marvel comics. He is one of the characters who falls under the Sony Spider-Man licensing deal. So, all of like the Spider-Man characters are Sony. Everything else is Disney and Marvel. Except for Spidey himself, who's kind of got that cross thing going yeah, on. But yeah, yeah. I, I just, it's going to be interesting to see how that one goes. For sure. This one's really exciting because this was a bidding war from hell going on for this one. We talked about it just a little while ago, too, and apparently the bidding war has been won. Tom Hanks' comedy A Man Called Otto has sold to Sony in a record worldwide rights deal pegged at around $60 million. <laughs> Sony's taken the global rights to the Red Hot package from CAA Media Finance and is lining up a wide domestic theatrical release this Christmas. There were multiple big offers on the table from studios, indies, and even a couple of streamers, but ultimately it came down to Sony vs. International buyers, Sony winning in a close run. Sources tell us a big reason that Sony got the film and is continue- because of its continuing commitment to theatrical release. So that knocked out the streamers right away. Yeah, but, seriously. I mean, it's important. We, we were just talking about a lawsuit you know, for not going to theaters, and I think this is important. So Yeah. And it's Tom Hanks. You exactly. want to see Tom Hanks in the fucking theater, right? Come like, on, come man. On. Come on. Uh, now, Zoe Deschanel uh, will star alongside Zachary Levi and Lil Rel Howery in Sony Pictures' live-action adaptation of Harold, uh, Harold and the Color Purple Crayon. Um... <laughs> 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 the, the film is based on the 1955 children's book by Crockett Johnson, which follows Harold, a curious four-year-old boy, who, with his purple crayon, has the power to create a world of his own. Mm. Very interesting, man. Very interesting. I wonder who's going to play the kid. I don't know. I don't know. This just brings me back to picture pages, picture pages. Right, time there you go. Time to get your picture pages. There you time go. to get your crayons and your <laughs> pencils. And he would literally draw things. Like, I don't know. I'm so fucking old. Uh, go jumping over to MGM. George Clooney has rounded out his cast for his long-awaited adaptation of The Boys in Boat With, with Joel Edgerton, Jake Mullins, Sam Strike, Luke Slatterly, Thomas Elms, Tom Vary, Bruce Harriman Earl, Will Coben, and Hadley Robinson joining Callum Turner, who was previously announced. As we've reported before, the film will tell the triumphant underdog story of the University of Washington men's rowing team who stunned the world in 1936 by winning the Berlin Olympics. Oh, yeah. very interesting. It's going to be exciting. Definitely, man, definitely. Now, Lionsgate <laughs> uh, it will distribute a new Michael Jackson biopic titled Michael. Mm. Uh, the film is being made with a corporation of the Michael Jackson estate, uh, which may impact how it details with the multiple allegations of the child sex abuse that were brought against the King of Pop over the course of his career following his 2009 death. So that mm. one's going to be very interesting. I, I, how do you do a legit biopic, though, if – the Michael Jackson estate is in charge of it, and they're not going to let the no. the true story come out. Yeah. I just feel like that's going to be a a washed biopic. Yeah. Now, while never proven or disproven or whatever, it's still I, I don't know. You know, yeah, yeah, it's it's just part of I guess his legacy that it, it happened. Is. And I mean, there was a lot of rumors happening for years and years and years, and it's just how are you not going to tell the true story? Yeah, I, yeah. I hope that the estate allows that and and tries to do it right. I, yeah. I, I just don't know. We'll see. Hey, 
Katie McGrath, Ray McKinnon, Adam Shapiro, Mark Mahushai, and Marina Mazpe have been cast opposite Colin Woodle and Mel Gibson in Stars' The Continental, the prequel to the John Wick film series. Now, we've talked about this. The show will be presented as a three-night special event TV series produced for Stars by Lionsgate Television. So, I know you're excited about that. You're a huge John Wick fan, so. Yeah. Mel Gibson. But you got to overlook that and just go with it. It's going to be awesome. for sure. Well, I watched the uh, the Mark Wahlberg boxer father john or whatever the fuck, father paul yeah yeah uh, with mel gibson in it it looks really good though it so does. I, I, their their dynamic is gonna be fun oh yeah uh netflix this one's very interesting because ryan reynolds what happened to your break dog right. what happened to your break i think it was just this script this sounds amazing this story listen seriously y'all. uh is getting ready to go back to the past netflix released the first trailer uh for the adam project a new sci-fi action movie starring reynolds and directed by sean levy free guy and ne- free guy uh, the film stars reynolds as adam reed a fighter jet pilot from the future after an accident sends him traveling through time he winds up in the year 2022 when he was 12 years old boy struggling in school after an apparent disappearance of his father now his father is played by mark ruffalo yeah but look at this but look at this jennifer garner uh, plays adam's mom and 13 going on 30. the cast is rounded out by katherine kinner zoe Ashan. Ananda and Alex Malari Nat Jr. In the trailer, the two versions of Adam meet after the older self crashes his futuristic jet in the woods near his childhood home. The two join forces on an adventure that will take them through time and space and eventually force both versions of Adam to confront their absent father together. Now, the Adam Project releases on Netflix March 11th. That is very freaking interesting, and uh, it sounds like a great movie. I know. Like, like, I just love that. And come on, it's got Zoe Zeldon and Ryan Reynolds but if you're not excited about Mark Ruffalo and Jennifer Garner back together again you are not a 13 going on 30 fan right. and you should just not watch this film that's all just I'm saying say. it's going to be huge man uh, Payman Benz has been tapped to direct and serve as co-executive producer of four episodes including the pilot of Blockbuster mm. Netflix's upcoming single camera workplace comedy starring Randall Park now Blockbuster is a 10 episode ensemble cam- uh, comedy that takes place in you guessed it, the last blockbuster video store in America. It explores what it takes and more specifically who it takes for a small business to succeed against all odds. This is good because the last blockbuster store has been getting a ton of attention lately, it right? Has. It's everywhere. So to make a series out of it and the people trying to keep it around, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good one. Uh, jump so into Amazon, Reese Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine, first studio feature film, Something from Tiffany's, has rounded out its cast with JoJo T. Gibbs, Javicia Leslie, a K. Batwoman, uh, Chido Nakachoa, uh, Stephanie Shepard, and Michael Rourke have signed on to Amazon Original Film. They join ensemble-led cast uh, Zoe Deutsch. It also includes Kendrick Sampson, Ray Nicholson, uh, Shay Mitchell, and Leah uh, Jeffries. Now, the film watches as women's life is upended uh, when an engagement ring meant for someone else uh, leads her to the the person she's meant to be with. Hmm. The film will premiere exclusively on Prime Video in more than 240 countries and territories worldwide. I okay. I, I Rom-coms, man. They're I mean, making their way back. I watched Marry Me last night with Owen Wilson. So glad they recast that one, too, oh, by yeah. the way, because oh, yeah. that role was perfect for Owen Wilson, not <laughs> fucking Army Hammer. But that was a great rom-com. Yeah, so and, I think they're on the come up, man. And who better to be in charge of a rom-com than Reese Witherspoon? Yeah. I mean, hello, it, her first feature film, that's awesome. Exactly. That she's behind. Yeah. Of course, she started. Tons of them. Yeah. Uh, Amazon has renewed the Alan Richardson fronted action drama series Reacher for a second season. I don't know what that means for his future on Titans, but you yeah. know. Uh, the fast turnaround renewal comes just three days after the streamer launched season one of the series. Amazon said that Reacher ranked in the top five most watched series ever in the U.S. and globally over a 24 hour period, and it was also among the highest rated original series with subscribers giving it an average of 4.7 out of 5. So it totally makes sense that they renewed. 
renewed it like right away. Oh, yeah. I'm a big Alan Richardson fan, so uh, I hope it does really well. But I do hope we get to see him back as Hawk. Same, man. I mean, I loved him ever since like Blue Mountain State. Oh, and yeah. I mean, he's such a fucking great actor that nobody gives him enough credit. No, like, I mean, no. just an absolute badass. I saw him first. The very first time I ever saw him, he was Aquaman on Smallville. That's hilarious. Like that dude, he's been around a while, man. Yeah, seriously. And he still looks like he could play like a college uh, kid. Totally good. I mean, uh, um, now heading over to Apple, following a busy fall in both the film and TV worlds, uh, Adrian Brody is looking to stay busy as he sets to join the Apple original films Ghosted, starring Chris Evans and Ana de Armas. The project is described as a high-concept romantic action-adventure film. Apple acquired the high-profile project during the summer, Ooh. so that's very exciting. Those are some awesome names attached to that thing, I mean, too. you know, reuniting of the Knives Out, you know, Seriously. Ana de Armas and Chris Evans, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Apple TV Plus has also greenlit Mrs. American Pie, a new comedy series starring Kristen Wiig. Laura Dern is apparently the executive producer behind this and is eyeing a key role for herself in it. Set in the early 70s, Mrs. American Pie fouls Maxine Simmons as she attempts to secure her place within the high society of Palm Beach. And she navigates the line between the haves and the have-nots. The series focuses on questions of who gets a seat at the table and what people will sacrifice to get there. It's Mm. been given a 10 episode series order. Damn, that sounds intense. Oh, yeah. Um, Apple has also ordered a dark comedy series called Sunny. Uh, Rashida Jones set to star yeah. in a half hour show. Jones stars as Susie, an American woman living in Kodo, Japan, um, now, whose life is upended when her husband and son disappear in a mysterious plane crash. As a consultation, uh, she is given uh, Sunny one of a new class of domestic robots made by her husband (laughs) electronics company uh though at first Susie's resents sunny attempt to fill the void in her life gradually they develop an unexpected friendship as longer they as the longer they spend together and they uncover the dark truth of what really happened to Susie's family becoming dangerously in in their like intertwined in the world that Susie never knew existed mm. that mm. that that's wow apple apple man how, how how close to the robot does she get exactly I exactly. just, no, I'm just saying, you've seen them, guys. They have some seriously lifelike robots. Just saying. Game, right? Just saying. That, that, <laughs> that one sounds be, interesting. That could be a controversial series. We'll yeah. just have to keep an eye on it. Seriously, man. Seriously. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that was in the industry news. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. We absolutely loved it. Oscars, man, we cannot freaking wait. But now it is time for our guest segment. Yes. We got the one and only Sammy Haney coming on the show. Oh, my gosh. Talk everything Raising Dion Season 2. And man, oh, man, we got to hear some behind-the-scenes stories stories of her on set, what she did during the pandemic quarantine time, and just so many other things, and we get to bond with her over pets. Yeah, of course. That's what I love about this interview, and I think you guys are going to really love it too, is that we got to hear a bit, little bit about her personal life and what she does, and, and it's very cool. And like I said, I teased, she gives us some stuff that you really want to pay attention to at the end of this interview, so don't, you know, it's going to be big. For sure, for sure. Well, here she is. Sammy Haney, welcome inside the Crazy Ant Farm. How are you? Good, how are you? Oh, we're doing great. We are so excited to finally talk to you. As you know, we've talked to several of your castmates. Praise and kind words for you. They absolutely adore you, as do we. So we are super excited to finally have you on the show. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here too. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. So how we like to get started and everything is kind of like do a little introduction for all of our fans and listeners who might not be familiar with you. Um, how did you kind of get started in acting? Did you always know this is what I want to do or did you kind of like fall into it? Or talk about that a little bit. How'd you get started? Well, my mom was on Facebook. It was Facebook, right? Yeah. Yeah. She was on Facebook and she saw a casting call mm-hmm. for a little girl in a wheelchair that mm-hmm. sounded just like how I was. Mm-hmm. So um, we did the uh, audition mm-hmm. in my sister's room in front of the closet because the closet looks nice. <laughs> and, and we sent it in and they liked it a lot. So they sent us a, another one and we did it and... We were in the middle of a going to a uh, family 
a trip uh-huh. to the other family. Mm-hmm. And then right as we got there, or like when we were in the car, they called us and said that I got the part. So we drove back and went there and yeah. did it. That's wow. so exciting. That's so exciting. I'm sure you might see you might see our little puppy hop up every once in a while. He, uh-huh. he likes to be a part of the interviews. Oh, yes. His name is Peanut. <laughs> Hello, Peanut. Oh, he Aww. says hi. He says hi. <laughs> well, that's exciting. So, like, like what was it? Were, were you just, like, so excited when you got the call and found out that you got the part? Um, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's really cool. So, so uh, did you want to act before that or are you just kind of like that was your very first time trying to get into it or like when you saw that or what? Um, that was my very first time trying to get into it. Oh, right. so you look at you nailing your very first audition. Well, I mean, clear because of all the talent. I mean, you're clearly talented. Yes. So. I mean, every Thank scene you. that you're in and raising Dion, you steal the scene. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely amazing. We love your comedic relief that when sometimes the show can be a little serious, you lighten it up a little bit and you make people laugh. So we really enjoy that part of watching Raising Dion. We actually just went back and watched the first season again because of how amazing your acting was. So we just absolutely love it. But something, Thank you so much. of course, of course. My favorite, you know what my favorite thing is? Is Esperanza is never afraid to tell it like it is. That's true. She, yeah. she'll, she'll tell anybody like the this is how it is, and you're gonna listen to me. I, I love that about it. <laughs> yeah, we're super excited to have you on because we want to talk to you a little bit about raising Dion because it seems like the whole cast is kind of like a family dynamic. You and Josai just really enjoy spending time together and just having fun, and that's what it's all about, right? It is, yeah. Okay, so I have some stories. Oh, oh yes, please. we love stories. <laughs> <laughs> so one time while we were on break, mm-hmm. I haven't had any uh, scenes in the Biona Lab science set. Uh-huh. Uh, me and all the other kids... And the parents, of course, mm-hmm. snuck into the <laughs> Biona set oh. and looked at everything mm-hmm. and played with all the stuff that was there. Oh, but it was, it's like a set, so <laughs> well, that's exciting, right? So, so, and you guys, uh, yeah, let, let's talk about it because I mean, you guys, you guys are fantastic on the show together and everything, but y'all are like awesome away from the show too. It's clear that you all get along very well, right? You guys, I, we just love all the videos that you guys make together, like away from the show. I mean, that's talk about that a little bit. Do you guys do a lot of that, and do you guys talk a lot uh, away from the show? Because it seems like you do. Well, when possible. Um, we do some streaming together just recently. Yeah. We streamed testing uh the some candy from some candy that oh, we got awesome. from the play. Okay. That was really fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's awesome that y'all stay connected because like we said, you guys just seem like a really tight knit group and really close. So we we love to hear that and all the listeners love to hear that too because they I know I'm sure a lot of people uh, can relate to this, but when I'm watching a show, I kind of hope that two actors have the same relationship in real life that they do on camera and during their like performances. So it's awesome to see that you guys are actually really friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I want to ask you about uh, Miss Carol because she just raves about you yes. and thinks you are just like the most special person. And uh, talk about her for a little bit. What's it like, uh, like working for her? And does um, how much did you ha- input did you have for Esperanza? Does she talk to you a lot about like this is kind of what we're thinking, and then you kind of say what you're kind of thinking, and you guys work together on that or what? Well. Uh... My dad talks to her, and then I approve, and, like, what stuff, what, what, like, what, when you're, like, working stuff out or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, safety the only thing stuff. I was involved in was just the safety aspects of it. There you just go. making sure, like, yeah, you know, if she has to go over gravel really fast or something, like, oh, that's not really, we don't really want to do that. Right. Or yeah. They were really, like, helping, and, uh, like, they put a ramp on my uh, trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. They were really uh, helping with all the safety stuff and stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, that it makes really sense. Awesome. 
Yeah. Well, if you know, because I know you've listened to our interviews with Carol, she said the second that she saw you, she knew you were you were it. Like, I, I mean, they, she pretty much knew right away you were getting the role. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she was convinced from the second she saw you. So, I mean, we are not surprised that you were got the call right away because she she knew. She lo- she just loves you. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of All course. Right. I mean, how can awesome. they not? How can they not? Are you excited about season two coming out? Because the popularity of season one was like off the charts. So are you excited about season two? I am extremely. And here's what you can, I, I can say minimal. Yes. Here's what I can say about you. <laughs> okay. So Dion has to save the city of Atlanta. Oh. And. He gains some very new, cool superpowers. Mm-hmm. And he grows as a person as well as a superhero. Mm-hmm. And so does his mom as a mother and a person. And she has to adjust to Dion's growth as well. Mm-hmm. And um, you also get to see a superhero kid fight against a supervillain kid. Mm-hmm. Oh. So that's super awesome. Yeah. And then my character, Esperanza has a story arc all the way to the last episode. Nice. Oh, that's uh, very exciting. I would bet you're more heavily involved with with, with helping Dion this time around, right? Because like I said, you always tell him like it is. So when he kind of gets himself in trouble, I'm betting you're the one who kind of like gives him some reason, right? I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so great. But I mean, as you know, and as everyone in the world knows, we have been affected by a social pandemic. So we want to know... What was shooting like while you were in the middle of COVID? Did you feel safe on set? Um, yes, everyone was required to wear masks mm-hmm. and everyone had their own like tiny tents that they would stay in when there was a break. Mm-hmm. Well, and de- we didn't we didn't get too close to each to each other yeah. unless it was like during filming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty safe, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you guys felt comfortable because that's what it's all about, to make sure, you know, to put out good content because, you know, you know we've been saying it the whole interview, that we love Raising Dion, but to make sure you guys feel comfortable as well because that's the most yeah. important part of it. But, I mean, you know, for there for a little bit, for about three or four months, like nothing was happening. So what were you doing your, during your time of quarantine and COVID? Well, we got a new pet tortoise. Oh, His name okay. is Rolando. Uh huh. <laughs> Great and name. He really loves eating, especially when we give him lettuce. Mm-hmm. And when we give him bath, we like to scrub his shell. Oh. Did you know that they can actually feel the shell? Oh, oh I no. have no idea. Did not know that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. You learn something new every day. Yeah, that's yeah. A, okay. So, so he likes to eat. What types of things does he eat? Because we also hear that you like to do some gardening. Do you grow some food for him in the garden, or what? Well, in our garden, we grow cucumbers, bell peppers, lettuce, uh, tomatoes, which you can't have, but I'm just listing other things we grow. Right. Tomatoes, uh, all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, does he like the lettuce? Yeah. Uh. Mom, do we use the lettuce from our garden or the lettuce from H-E-B? Uh, we use both. It depends on if we have any lettuce in our garden. Use. There you yeah. go. That's awesome, though. That's awesome because I personally had a turtle growing up, and I absolutely loved it. I mean, we kind of let him uh, get out every once in a while and, like, wander <laughs> around the living room. It was really yeah. fun to let him we just – do that, too. Yeah, isn't yeah, that Yeah, Rolando cool? is a super explorer, uh-huh. but for some reason – I, like, have to, like, scoot by him while yeah. he's walking because uh-huh. he tries to eat stuff off the floor. Oh, my goodness. And he socks and stuff. <laughs> so I have to make sure he doesn't eat the bad stuff mm-hmm. and just, like, make sure he doesn't do that. Right. That's so, awesome, yeah. though. That's awesome. I don't know about you, but mine used to get stuck on a lot of things. Does yours get <laughs> stuck? Not really. That's good. We make sure that he doesn't go into, like, uh. well, I make sure that he doesn't go into, like, under the couch or behind anything where we couldn't get him or he would get stuck mm-hmm. or in like tight spaces and stuff. So mm-hmm. I make sure he's he's really safe while he's exploring the house. Well, that's good. You sound like you're an awesome mom. So that is <laughs> – which of course you are. Of course you are. So we have to ask though now because we everybody's excited about raising Dion and everything. But now that you're this like star and you're like you're nailing auditions and you're acting and you're into the game now, are you working on anything else? What else can we expect to see you in? 
Well, I'm working on an unannounced Disney show. Oh. About through the episodes. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Disney, like everybody loves Disney, so that's got to be pretty exciting. I also might be getting the part of a zombie movie that's by a Netflix writer. Oh. Oh. Do you like zombies? Do you like zombie stuff? Um, I'm not scared of them. I'm pretty all right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I absolutely love it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> of course. Of course. Have you seen the new Encanto movie yet? Um, yes. We all watched it in our living room. Yeah. And yeah. Did you like it? Awesome. Yes. All right. Which, um, which power would you have out of all of the cousins, out of all the siblings, which powers would you have? Hmm. Right. Uh, I think I would have the power of the uh, little boy who can speak to animals. Ooh, yes, yeah. me too. That yeah. was the one I was thinking as well. Because I think if I could hear everybody at like every single second, I might go a little crazy. Like <laughs> I, I don't want to be in everybody's conversation. Yeah, also that because our cats are very drama y. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it would definitely help so. to be able to know what they were thinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, so you, you saw Encanto and everything. Now, I'm not even going to ask because I'm pretty sure we could figure out what your favorite show on Netflix is. But now that you're going to be in Disney, too, what do you have a favorite Disney show or a favorite Disney movie? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> right. I think that my favorite Disney show might be the Moana Teat movie. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. So I, I like that. That was an unexpected answer. I did too. I, that's a good one. I mean, we love Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who plays the main character in that. <laughs> and we also love Lin-Manuel Miranda, who wrote the music for it. So, I mean, yeah. it's another great one that Disney and Pixar put together. We're super excited about that one. But something else that we really wanted to talk to you about is that you have your own merchandise line. And it's a whole bunch of creative designs. So let's talk about that a little bit. What do you think we're do you come up with the designs? And I know your dad helps you out a lot with that. Well, my dad thinks up the designs mm -hmm. and the color scheme, and I approve of it. Or like, uh, if the color scheme like is a little uh, strange looking, uh -huh. then I just like help him pick like lighter or darker there color of that. Or uh, I never picked a different color because he's a pretty good color scheme. Oh, well, there you go. What do you What do you think is your favorite design that's on your website? Um, probably the Loch Ness monster one. Nice, yeah. I love that one. That yeah. one's really good. I think um, I really like the one where you're a Simpsons character. I think that one looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, that one's really good too. Oh my goodness! But it's so much mm -hmm. cool stuff, of course. And that's uh, disabilityshirts.com. We want to make sure everybody knows that and can go there. And we're super excited about that. So, how fun was your contest? And what could people win when you were doing the contest? Um. Well, they could win a um pack of four one of a kind bobbleheads from mm -hmm. Raising Dion season two. Oh wow! Of all us kids, including the villain. Oh. And, yeah, it's, I can't wait. It looks pretty cool. That's amazing. That's amazing. Are you going to be doing more contests like that in the future? Um, probably. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, probably. Okay, so and how cool is it to have your own bobblehead? <laughs> That's got to be epic. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yeah? And I really love it because they designed it super good. The mm -hmm. wheelchair looks like my like my wheelchair. Oh, awesome! Like awesome, yeah, and, that's cool. And uh, they really did, they did a really good job at making it. Awesome, it's awesome. Did you have to send them like pictures and everything, or did they do scans of you guys, or how did they do that? Um. Well, we took pictures, um, from the TV show. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, and mm -hmm. sent them to them so that they could like make the sculpture uh, right. look like uh, the picture. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm congratulate. I'm bet on all the winners. Absolutely love having them because who wouldn't? I mean, I, I want some. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, listen, Sammy. This has been an absolute amazing interview. Thank you so much for taking a little time out of your night and talking to us. We absolutely appreciate it. Like we said, we love raising Dion, and season two is coming February first, right? That's right. Oh, so we're super excited about that, and everybody go watch it. And again, thank you so much. You're absolutely amazing.
Thank you for having us on the show. Of course. And thank you for being such a big fan of the show. We absolutely love talking to you on social media and all the interaction. And you've just been wonderful. You and the, all the castmates from Raising Dion. You guys are just amazing. And open invite. Anytime that you want to come back and talk or chat and anything you got, we'd love to have you back on with the Disney uh, show and, and the zombie movie and stuff. That'd be fun. All right. That sounds fun. Awesome. Well, fantastic. <laughs> we hope you have a good... Oh, yeah. Oh. Hold up. Hold I have up. a special announcement that okay. I'm going to make before we leave. Okay. So, at the end of the last episode, like, you have to watch it all the way through the credits. Mm-hmm. There will be a post credit scene oh. that has a little insight of what season three could look like if we have a season three. Because, like, a bunch of people have to watch it in the first 30 days for there to be season free. Oh. Well, I think you guys are going to be okay because I think a whole lot of people are going to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Just based on the reaction we've seen on social media, a whole lot of people have been waiting for it. So I think you guys are going to be good. And thank you for sharing that with us because, the, you know, post-credit scenes are the big thing now. So we can't wait to watch a post-credit scene and see what's going on. Yeah. I wouldn't. I usually don't expect a post credit scene on a Netflix TV show. Right. But yeah. there is one, and it's super awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Again, thank you so much for taking some time out, and we'll be talking to you soon. All right. Bye. 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 All right, man. That was fun. That oh was a lot of fun. Goodness, she is so. I'll tell you what, Esperanza is all Sammy. Oh, yeah. I, and vice versa. I think you could just see that shine through. She, sure. she was just amazing. It's exactly. so Exactly. Not a lot of direction needed, man. That's who she is. That's, <laughs> oh, so cool. So and she's cool. a little entrepreneur. She she's got is. the little t-shirt thing going. She's, a, you know, behind the bobblehead. And, I mean, a turtle owner. How yeah. cool is that? It's so cool, <laughs> man. So cool. And like we were talking about, her merchandise website is disabilityshirts.com. Yep. Be sure to go over there and pick up some stuff because there's a lot of different different awesome designs just about loving yourself and accepting everyone no matter race gender sexual orientation disability anything like that it has something for everyone so be sure to check out that website and thank you again miss sammy haney for coming on the show all right guys now it's time for the top five segments we're super excited about it because this week it is top five actresses of color and i mean a lot of times you know things get whitewashed and you know not a lot of people like to talk about these different things so this is why we're here we get deep into it and talk about what these actresses meant to us what they meant to their certain you know ethnic communities and their race communities and just everything that they've done milestone wise in the entertainment industry and that's why they are on our top five man oh man we got some good ones we really do i mean man number five for me is danielle brooks Mm. you might know her from peacemaker right now she is kind of like like just an epic side of like peacemaker and showing friendship between the two and i because this show is also fucking crazy and you know out there and they do a lot of shit that is questionable but i think what her character does is show the good side in people even when they're unintentionally being a certain way that isn't accepted in today's society like you know what peacemaker's character is a little unintentionally racist and she's able to be like well no i think he's just fucking ignorant so i mean it's just one of those things but she's just killing it man i absolutely love every scene that she's in so that's why she's on my number five right now this show is absolutely amazing go watch peacemaker on hbo max right now absolutely that's a that's a great choice my number five we just talked about her a little bit ago with uh, ryan reynolds new movie zoe zeldana which you guys of course know is gamora from guardians of the galaxy but she's been in so many other films comedies dramas like sci-fi hardcore stuff her range is just incredible and she's done a huge jump uh you know she, it, it's talked about you know like whether she's too light or too dark or you know this and that and she has kind of just engulfed every role that she has taken on and and, and slammed that controversy down and, and that's why i respect her a whole lot just i mean above and beyond her acting skills she's not scared to take on roles controversial roles um, and fights for them, you know, because I remember, and for the life of me, I can't remember off the top of my head the name of the movie, but she was cast in a role that was for a much darker skinned 
black woman, and she fought hard for the role. And it's like, listen, this is ridiculous. Let's not color wash things. Let's do this, you know. And I just really think, you know, people like that who are hard, like, stand for something and say, this is ridiculous. We can't be against our own race, you know, like, and, and different things like that is awesome. So Zoe Zeldana, just, I love her. She's fantastic. She's my number five. For sure, man. For sure. Number four for me is Selma Hayek. Mm. Man, oh, man. She, this, she has, like, expanded behind, like, so many genres. She is fucking epic. Latest being the Eternals. But, I mean, you know, she goes back and has some fucking amazing rom-coms. Oh, like, yeah. Like, she is all over the world and we just love everything about that and she speaks out for the latinx and latino community in sense of there needs to be more representation and there needs to be more roles written for this specific community that it needs to be for every community that is not just white so that's why i think she is very influential and has made milestones in the entertainment industry and that's why i wanted to put her on my list because one she's a badass two she's beautiful and three she can just kick all of our asses i mean did you see the eternals like she's the leader (laughs) of that shit okay i'm just saying she'll control all of us but yeah number four for me selma hayek facts facts Facts. okay my number four might be the hardest woman working in show business today she is finally receiving all of the accolades that she so long has deserved she's absolutely killing it she's moved behind the camera as you guys know as a director and she's absolutely slaying i'm of course course talking about regina king she is everywhere she is groundbreaking she is smashing the, the roof and just like taking names and kicking ass and she's doing everything she wants and she's doing it phenomenally whether she's in front of or behind the camera um she is making great strides for a lot of the young Younger women coming up. She's showing you this is the way to do it. I mean, I remember Regina way back on 227 with Marla Gibbs when she was like a tiny, tiny little girl. And she is just from there to Poetic Justice with Janet Jackson and Tupac to just like fucking just the Watchmen and just like so many crazy phenomenal roles that she's had. And then One Night in Miami to her directorial debut was just fucking awesome. She's just absolutely killing it and she's doing it the right way. And she's proving that whether you're a woman, whether you're a woman of color, Color, it doesn't matter. You, If you are talented and you are committed and you are determined, you will get where you want to get and you will finally get that recognition. And I, I could not be more happier for her. And sincerest condolences and well wishes to her for losing her son. Um, I can only even imagine how tragic that was. Uh, so um, just well wishes. But yeah, my number four, Regina King. Definitely, man. Definitely. A great, a great inspirational person to be in the entertainment industry. Oh, yeah. Uh, number three for me is someone who I just want a part of my life. <laughs> I really do. She is absolutely amazing in everything she does. Comedic, drama, like fucking amazing. Uh, oh, yeah. Taraji P. Henson. Oh, my come gosh. Come on yes. now. She is unapologetic, and I think that is what is so amazing about her. She does not change who she is for anyone. No. Um, my first, you know, it was these two movies back-to-back. My first, like, introductions to her were... Hustle and Flow and Four Brothers. Those two movies came out back to back, and her and uh, Terrence Howard were both in those films, and they both work really well side by side with each other. And then, of course, going to Empire, like as Cookie, she's just such a badass. But I mean, she brings herself out in these roles, and I mean, you can tell, like, she is born for this industry like everything that she has done is for her family and i forget what what her speech was when um she was on stage one time she was like i or like when she was thinking back on what she wanted to be and how successful she wanted to be in her career she was talking about how she does not care she'll walk across that stage with a baby on her hip and be proud of it i'm (laughs) like yes i love it but i mean taraji p henson like seriously that is someone who i would just love to have a part of my life like she is so influential so inspiring and just so fun to be around i feel like she's just always happy always bubbly so that's why she had to make my list oh absolutely has to and person of interest she was so fantastic on that and like so many different things and if you're wondering she is exactly like what logan said brings real to the character i was fortunate enough to meet her and terrence hair howard for a brief second when them and craig brewer were in memphis they shot hustle and flow in memphis and i was working at the station television station in memphis and they came in as guests and 
what you see is what you get with Taraji P. There's no fake about her. She's fantastic. And, and like the, for the brief second, I got to say hello to her and fanboy out. Thank you. It was awesome. Um, uh, but yeah, she's as you were so right. She's as real as they come. Um, my number three. I just adore this woman. She is fantastic. I, everything I have ever seen her in, she is just phenomenal. She is as great a person in. Outside of the acting world, though, she's doing a lot of humanitarian work and working with children at the border and so many different things and causes that she's involved with. I'm talking about Jessica Camacho, mm. who most recently on All Rise, oh my God, if you didn't see her storyline on All Rise and with the domestic abuse and all of the kind of stuff, and then even taking some of her real life stuff with the children on the border into that series or whatever. And of course, on The Flash as Vibes Woman and like, you know, so many different things, but. She is so phenomenally gifted and uh, and a, a charge, you know, a, a cheerleader and a charge and leading the way for, for the Latina community as well. Um, just amazing. If you guys haven't checked her out in All Rise, I can't stress enough. Be sure to watch that show when it debuts on OWN again for the third season. It's outstanding. Go catch her in old episodes of The Flash and just look up her, her filmography because it's amazing. And you, I, trust me, you'll be like, yeah, she deserves to be on the list. For sure, man. For sure. She's such a badass. She is a badass. And like, to be honest. Uh, number two for me is probably the most popular actress out right now. I mean, she's got Euphoria. She's got the Spider-Man franchise. She's absolutely everywhere. She has a great personality. And we're talking about Zen. Zendaya. Duh. She's fucking amazing. If you have not watched Malcolm and Marie, mm. go watch that Fuck shirt. My life. That movie was so good. Her and John David Washington. Holy so shit. So good. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Man. I mean, she finally got an Emmy. She deserves a freaking Oscar when it comes around. But I mean, this girl is just such a freaking badass and starts from Disney, starts from Disney Channel as an itty bitty little thing and then works her way up to where she is now. Like, I, I can't have I can't say enough words about Zendaya. She is absolutely amazing, and she is also unapologetic and seems just super down to earth, super humble, super nice, and just I think she's gonna be on top of the world one day. So oh, I mean, she's absolutely amazing, and that's why she's on my list. Number two for me, Zendaya. And I mean, she dates Spider Man. And she dates Spider Man. I mean, come on, come on. Come on. I mean, yeah. obviously Zendaya would have been on my list as well, but we try to keep things separate. And I mean, I knew your generation, you were gonna definitely have her so i got I there first like, exactly i got there first I, exactly but my number two equally as awesome has been around now it seems like forever since the early 80s as a we on knots landing that's right a tv soap opera knots landing way back in the day is when i was first introduced to this gorgeous lovely incredible woman and now she's just absolutely slaying won an oscar paved the way for people like zendaya and, and others i'm of course talking about halle berry mm, yeah Halle Berry is absolutely slaying it now. She's made her directorial debut and didn't take it easy. She went all MMA fighter shit in her directorial right. debut and was in it, like whooping ass. Like she has just been, she has basically faced every controversy you can face. Talking about Zoe Zeldana, Halle Berry was the first kind of to go through with the whole she's too light skinned, she's not really black. She's, a, you know, all this bullshit, right? Like, like that they have to go through and all these different things. But she paved the way, she carved out, she went through that bullshit shit to lead the way for others and uh and her career has just been phenomenal um and she's outstanding she's vocal i think the one thing about all of our choices on our lists is that all of these women are outspoken unapologetic and stand for who they are no matter what and that's why i love all of these choices so far but my number two definitely halle berry well, by the way, Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. Just go watch that. Yeah, so just do good. it. She's amazing. Just in that movie. Um, number one for me. I mean, she's absolutely amazing. She's hilarious in everything she's in, oh. even when it's like a serious role. She brings out the comedy, and I'm talking about Aquafina. Yeah. And when she first came out, there was a lot of haters behind her. Man, like they thought she was annoying. They hated the way she talked. All those different things. But you know. I think it's just people love to hate, but she let all that shit roll off of her shoulders because she did absolutely amazing in Their Farewell, which is an amazing drama performance yep. for the Asian community. And of course, Crazy Rich Asians and of course, Ocean's 8 and all these different things. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. like Stole that movie. So I'm just good, <laughs> man. I think she's going to have a great career and she just keeps rising every single year. She's doing something different and she's not afraid to try things. And she, just like Taraji P, is also 
unapologetic about who she is. And I think mm-hmm. that is something that is very important to be in this entertainment industry. You got to be good, unapologetic, and humble all at the same time. Like you For be, sure. Like all these amazing things. And Aquafina just sums all of that up. So that's why I, everything that comes out with her in it, I go see because it's worth it every single time just for her performance alone. So that's why number one for me is Aquafina. Yes. And my number one, I all, all I have to say is this, and you'll know exactly who it is, the Calvary. The Calvary. Of course, I am talking about Agent May herself, Ming-Na Wen, the only woman to pull off the Disney trifecta, by the way, the only woman. She is the Disney princess. She is Star Wars. She is Marvel. And she is badass. Yeah. She's an absolutely phenomenal actress. She's an outstanding human being. She has been around for I can't even tell you how long. And she still looks like she's like like a baby. Yeah. I mean, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's crazy. Most recently, obviously, the book of Boba Fett. I remember her all the way back on As the World Turns. Mm. That's right. She started on a soap opera, y'all. Like, I just, that's where I first saw her. Um, just an amazing career. Then, of course, with uh, George Clooney on ER and just like, just Mulan. Yeah. She was the original Mulan and was in the new Mulan. And she's just, it's unreal the career that this woman has had. And quite honestly, she terrifies me. Like, I would not be in a room and want to like, have her mad at me because she, talking about people who would kick our ass, literally. she would literally kick our ass. Um, <laughs> But seriously, she's just an amazing, awesome woman who is so endearing to her fans and and is so, like, she appreciates the fan support and is always vocal about that and always out there, um, which makes her even more awesome because she does recognize that. And, uh, yeah, she's just outstanding and again paving the way for the asian community Mm -hmm. like this woman's been doing it for years and kind of like getting it out there and and taking care of business um and man we would really like you on the show ming right (laughs) all of them oh please just come on the show i just even for a top five anything just come on exactly absolutely amazing well we want to know who is your favorite actress of color i mean there's so many good ones out there viola davis i mean we didn't even mention her like so many man so good it's absolutely so many amazing it's impossible to sometimes do five facts like i mean you just can't we need like 30 exactly <laughs> exactly uh, um but yes we love the fan interaction reach out through twitter uh comment below on the youtube channel all these different things we love it we yes. love it uh box office recap this week it was very interesting because i was kind of surprised that jackass took the lead mm. but you know it was the new movie that came out but i think it's only gonna be like a cinderella story one night done boom yeah. um so jackass forever did pull in uh 23.2 million came in at number one moonfall came in at number two with 9.9 million number three was no way home spider-man with 9.5 four was scream with 4.8 and sing two was um number five with 4.2 so this week uh what movies are coming out uh death on the nile i for sure think will be number one and number two will be marry me maybe maybe Uh, maybe, because peacock is still doing the simultaneous streaming on with some movies so who knows man? i gotta be honest i'm just as impressed as hell that spider-man no way home is still in the top 10 and still making nearly 10 million dollars a week yeah after it's been out and like clearly everybody's seen it like 500 times so the fact that it can stay in the top five and still be making double digit numbers is huge yeah for real man for real new movies coming out this week are miss willoughby and the haunted bookshop uh (laughs) wherever that is uh (laughs) death on the nile marry me blacklight and the Mm in-between so be sure to check all of those out Movies you can still go see are The Kingsman, Redeeming Love, American Underdog, The 355, and Licorice Pizza. Um, and you guys know the IMDb Pro top trending segment. Yes. The top shit that is going down in Hollywood right now. Uh, Nightmare Alley. That's the one with basically everybody. Bradley Cooper. Uh, that one's yep. out on Hulu or HBO Max. One of those right yep, now. Yep. Uh, Oscar nominated. So be sure to check that one out. It's on my list. Uh, top trending TV show and a top trending star by no surprise because this one is getting a lot of freaking buzz, which, you know, dicks talking to people. 
Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, it's very interesting. No, seriously, a talking dick. A talking dick. Like, um, the top trending TV show is Pam and Tommy, and the top trending star is the one and only Lily James uh, as Pamela Anderson. It's a very good show, man. I mean, it's very interesting to see how it all went down. Me, I was not born yet, so it's interesting <laughs> to hear and learn more about it. It's fun, man. It's really fun. <laughs> Seth Rogen is doing an amazing oh, yeah, job. He yeah. lost a whole bunch of weight, got ripped. So kudos to him. You guys know he's one of my favorite actors, so I love watching him work. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody talks, obviously, about the absolutely stunning transformation of Lily James into Pamela Anderson. But everybody, the entire cast is doing a phenomenal job in this series. And it really does give you a stark look in. Like, everybody's heard the story, but this is giving you like a stark real look at what went down and what i really like about this series is that hulu is taking great both sides yeah they're giving you both sides of how they think the story went down and is letting you decide mm-hmm. and um it's brilliant if you haven't checked it out check it out definitely worth it man definitely Episode worth it. to the talking dick yeah just letting you know preparing <laughs> you preparing you but anyway guys that's episode 184 for you thank you for getting crazy with us on podcast platforms and if you're watching on youtube we appreciate it yes we got to thank our guest one more time sammy haney for coming on the show Woo! she's absolutely amazing be sure to follow her on twitter and instagram be sure to follow us on twitter and instagram the company is at crazy ant media the podcast is at it calf podcast and you guys know we're both personally on social media myself at jlo fantastic and at crazy ant guy 1970 that's right man we're anywhere and everywhere and you guys know everywhere. you can subscribe to this podcast anywhere you listen to your podcast we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, so much more. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, be sure to hit the like video or like button on the video, subscribe <laughs> to the channel, and ring the bell for all the latest and greatest notifications that we got going on here at Crazy Ant Media. Yes. We love it, man. We love it. And be sure to visit our website, www.crazyantmedia.com, where you can start rocking the latest and greatest Crazy Ant Media gear. Like I said, Valentine's Day. Uh, February 14th, yes. we got 20% off all merchandise in our store, so be sure to check that out. We got Valentine's Day merch, so it is very important that you check that out. Yeah, very cool. Girl power stuff and, and Bonk and Antoinette stuff. I yes. mean, you know, because Valentine's Day, of course, they're going to be together. You know? Exactly, you got to get man. you both now. Exactly. Super <laughs> excited. But something else that I'm super excited about is the Oscars, because mm. I feel like we say this every year, but this year in particular, like since we've seen the majority of the films it is a very tight race for a lot of categories and i mean especially for best picture i mean come on 10 films that are nominated this year it's true it's true and because we have seen almost all of them and probably by the time they air next month we'll have seen all of the nominees it's also going to be a very close race for the golden funko between us okay now as you guys know we do an oscar watch party every year we vie for our golden funko logan has not won yet j-lo fantastic has not won yet lil cam has taken two i have taken one i'm not happy that she has taken two but this guy needs a win, so just we're going to see. Just one. <laughs> we're going to see. My goodness, <laughs> I'm man. excited about that, right. though. I am. I think my favorite part of the episode, though, was talking about the Star Wars stuff because oh, it's a yeah. great time to be a Star Wars fan. Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think that is so special because you do think May the 4th of Star Wars Day, but to push it back a couple weeks for the 40th anniversary sure. of when Obi-Wan was first seen on screen, I feel like that is very special. Uh, I totally agree. And my favorite part, obviously, the DC stuff because comic book geek in heaven right here I still can't get over Dr. Fate that golden helmet Pierce Brosnan is going to kick ass he is. I, I, I just I cannot wait it's so and then good. of course Keaton yeah. I mean here in the voice the legend I just there's so much good content out there right now guys <laughs> be sure to check all of it out and if you're watching something that we might not have watched please sure to yeah. let us know because we love catching up on shit for real um, but anyway you guys know we love the one, the only, Oprah!